Warning, Marriage on the Rocks provides unfiltered, unconventional, and sometimes unwelcomed relationship advice. Seth and Crystal are certified relationship coaches who have adopted specific methods that work very well for them. Your results may vary. Hey everyone, welcome to our 118th episode of Marriage on the Rocks. I'm Crystal. And I'm Seth. Every week we have a drink with our discussion and uh, we are featuring the proof syrup. Mm-hmm. Uh, I don't know, I, maybe all month long, I don't know. We, we wanted to try all of the different syrups that they gave us. We got three bottles, so at least for three weeks. Three weeks, month. yeah. Uh, and so this one is the... Maple bacon. Maple bacon. Mm-hmm. It's good. It's really good. It's really, really yeah. good. Yeah, um, Seth, we made a, a video on how to make yep. a bacon bourbon old fashioned. Mm-hmm. And we so actually we used the maple uh, bacon, <laughs> some local whiskey this time. Yeah, and it was a scissor tail out of Moore, Oklahoma. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah. yeah, so check it out. Join the Speakeasy group to see the recipe and what goes into it and how to make it and yeah, engage and participate and have fun. Yes, yeah. We thank you for everyone that does engage and. Participate. I think it, I think that it's uh, getting better Is with it? the engagement and Good. stuff. And yeah, so thanks, guys. We appreciate that. Uh, this week we are going to be talking about. Uh, are we talking pasta? <laughs> are we talking pussy? <laughs> <laughs> right. So yeah, I mean, really though, we we're gonna be. It's gonna be pretty. Some pretty steamy, and. Something needed, and I think that every every so often we need to have a, a sexy yeah. episode. Mm-hmm. It's fun to talk about. Um, but before we get started with that, Seth has his dumbass post of the week. Yep, this was courtesy of Shelby. Yes. On our Marriage on the Rock Speakeasy group, so you guys get those dumbass posts of the week. You want us to share them or talk about them? Throw them out there. Actually, so, she sent us this directly. Oh, she sent it directly. Yeah. Okay. Uh-huh. Well, still. Well, then she loses a point for not putting it on the page. (laughs) (laughs) This one says, Cheating is a part of ups and downs in a relationship. Though? Though, yeah. That's that's how it was. Okay. Every man is going to hurt you. You just got to find that one worth hurting for. Millions of happy wives have been cheated on and abused, but they fought for their marriage to work. (laughs) I completely agree that millions of women have been cheated on. I wouldn't say they're happy. No. I don't understand how you could ever be cheated on and still be a happy spouse. No. You shouldn't be. I know. Yeah. And you don't have to. Cheating isn't. Every man doesn't cheat. Mm -mm. Um, Mm-mm. Not every man's. Even if it's not cheating, not every man's going to hurt you. Yeah. I mean, that's. Or abuse you. Yeah. Yeah, I like how it says. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's ridiculous. Yeah, uh, Shelby was like, oh my gosh, I thought that you guys might enjoy this one yeah. as much as I, or think it was as stupid as I did. Yeah, it's <laughs> like, pretty yep, stupid. Pr- you're pretty much. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. So yeah, thanks Shelby. Uh, okay, back to the sexiness. We, okay, so I'm we, nervous are, <laughs> about this letter. Are you really? <laughs> so we got a letter. Uh, from one of our listeners and thank you for sharing this with us because it I mean it is something that is pretty I, I, don't, I know that not everybody would share something like this it, with us yeah I, I, it's it's a pretty I, I thought I think it's funny mm-hmm. I think it's truthful mm-hmm. um, with I think I, you know I think it borderlines that that penthouse letter. Yeah. But there's a there's an intent behind it, um, and I think the intent is what is so important and worth sharing, not just to read a steamy hot letter on the podcast. Right. Um, yeah. But there's a purpose behind why she shared it, and I think that it, it resonated with us. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's for sure. It's it's very in line with what we went through. We've talked to other people that have gotten divorced or separated or broke up or been dumped that went through very similar situations. Mm -hmm. And I think that, I don't know if I'd say it takes courage to send something like that, but it's, you know, you're, you're, I think, I don't think she really looked at it that way. I think it was really just, I'm going to share this. Um, 
you know, because we've, we've talked on here about sexual compatibility. We've talked about, you know, splicing up your marriage. We've talked about things like that. And, and we know that there's, there's going to be couples out there that are like, we're trying that and it's just not working. I know. I think this letter is bad news for those couples. It is. But for those that are on their second journey, it's really good news. Mm-hmm. Um, or you, you may uh, resonate with it. Yeah. And so do you want me to just read it? Yeah, yeah sure. Okay, go, yeah, so go for just, it. Yeah, dig in. <sighs> we'll hop right in. <laughs> do I need to put on a sexy voice for this? <laughs> <clears throat> no, it's because it's from a woman. Yeah. You should have to read it. I with know, the sexy right? voice. Mm-hmm. Okay, here's what it says. I was previously married for 14 years to my last husband. We got together at a fairly young age, and I was inexperienced to say the least. Sex didn't seem to come naturally and sometimes just felt awkward. My ex-husband didn't really do anything wrong, but I was just never excited about it. I've heard other women say that sex felt like work, and I didn't see it that way either. I just felt like I felt that there were other things I would rather be doing. I was indifferent about the whole thing and couldn't even tell if I was having an orgasm or not. Isn't that just sad? Yeah, I know. This was a constant pain point in our marriage, and I wanted to change it, but honestly didn't know where to start or how. Over the years, I got used to not enjoying it, but he did not. I knew it couldn't be that enjoyable for him, but he still tried to initiate whenever he could. He tried your typical sexy things that most men do. Flowers on the bed, hot baths, massages, buying me lingerie, introducing toys, and even sexting and the occasional dick pic. I remember getting the first dick pic he sent and immediately thinking, ew. (laughs) And I realized that he didn't turn me on no matter the effort he put in. You know, and we've kind of talked about that Mm -hmm. on, um, you know, whether it was the reason that your wife doesn't want to have sex with you, the reason your husband doesn't Mm -hmm. want to have sex with you, one of, you know, the sexual compatibility, and she's going to use a very specific word here shortly, um, that is just key. Mm Mm-hmm. All right, keep going. Fast forward to the end of the marriage. We got divorced and I began falling for a single coworker and we started heavily flirting at work, on social media, and through texting. He brought something out in me that I never felt with my ex. We didn't rush into bed, <clears throat> but I had this sexual draw to him that I had never felt with anyone else. I know now that it was chemistry, but I couldn't explain these new feelings and desires that I was having at the time. In one of our more flirtatious text sessions, I felt frisky and started sending him some revealing pictures. He seemed to like them and hinted around that it was turning him on. So I responded back with, prove it. (laughs) Right? (laughs) After I sent that, I thought, oh no, I just asked for a dick pic and I hate those. (laughs) He didn't respond at first and I thought I had crossed the line. Oh gosh, that's like the worst. (laughs) Trying to like... Shoot, I shouldn't have said that. You yeah, know? <laughs> and you can't take it back. Yeah. You can't like recall the, the message. <clears throat> um, he didn't respond at first, and I thought I had crossed the line and couldn't believe I would even suggest that. But just as I was in the middle of my text regret, he responds. My heart started pounding as I opened the message up, and there it was. <laughs> A hard, fleshy, veiny, glorious dick pic. <laughs> I, I love w- how she worded it. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't turned off. And I wasn't grossed out, but I was aroused. A few days later, we went on a very short date and headed back to his place to have sex for the first time. We didn't make love that night. We fucked. Twice. We've been happily married for the past five years and have an active sex life filled with passion, foreplay, sexy showers, and even the occasional anal session. And in parentheses, she puts... I had no idea what I had been missing out on, but (laughs) anal is awesome. (laughs) Too bad. Too much should send this in like earlier, so we because August is actually anal month. Yeah, we're trying to figure out. (laughs) And so we were (laughs) like, gotta bring it up and be like, I should have just done that in all the drink videos. Happy anal August. I know, (laughs) right? Yeah. And then she closes it out. She says, "I share this with you as someone who thought that they were just not a sexual person." But finding the right partner with the right chemistry and sexual compatibility is the key to my new marital bliss. I hope this story helps some, relates to some, and awakens some. Cheers. I like it. Um, 
But you know, we, we get we get this we get this email, and there's a few things that she says that brought up kind of conversation for us, not just on our past experiences and, and relatability to that. Um, I guess like sexual awakening mm-hmm. is kind of what what I would I would call it maybe, but. We, we we do know that we, we have had friends, we've had people, you know, you've kind of shared that you, you've been there as well, where you just, you just aren't that into it. Mm-hmm. Um, and ultimately, it ends up being what you were exposed to, the partner you're with, and things like that. And I, I think the other thing that she hits on, we'll kind of go back and talk about it, but it, even the statement of, we didn't make love. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I know. Is, you know, we were talking about it, and I'm like, who who even says that? Anymore? Yeah, I know. Well, it, do people say that? Yeah, do people mm-hmm. refer to having sex as making love? Mm-hmm. And I... Th- and what kind of people do you? Yeah, <laughs> and my cold-hearted assumption is people that aren't very good at fucking call it making love. <laughs> right, yeah, I know. Yeah. And I think it's... You know, people that don't really know how to get off and label it that. And that's, yeah. once again, just my cold-hearted opinion on it. Yeah. Um, but that that was something that we we had discussed before, and we were like, you know, when, when we talk about the, the passion and, and the sexuality in your relationship, what are we really trying to say? Are even, even you using terms like, you know, passion and things like that. Are we kind of sugarcoating? Are, are we really just trying to get across that that you guys just need to have some good old fucking? <laughs> yeah, I mean, and I don't know. I, I try to because I know that a lot of people, maybe not a lot, but people shy away from that term fucking mm-hmm. because it makes them feel dirty or naughty, I guess, and they're like. They don't want to think I, about... I think people think that it's a degrading term. Yes, that, that's that's very true. Yeah. And I, I think that some... You know, if, if, if a woman... I'm going to get generalistic. If a woman was to, you know, think or have the thought that... Oh, my husband, my husband was telling his coworkers he fucked me last night. Like, like that would be bad. But then there's other women that, like, like you, <laughs> that's like, that's hot. Yeah. So, I, I think that w- one of the things that, that I think's neat about her story is she really thought she was just a certain way. Mm-hmm. That I, you know, I am kind of shy about it. It's it's awkward. It, it, it feels unnatural. It's weird. And, mm-hmm. and yeah, I'm sure that they made love. Mm-hmm. You know, I know, once or twice a month they made love, and it sounds like the husband and and you kind of you kind of feel bad, you for, kind of feel bad for the guy because he's like I don't know what to do. I'm yeah. trying to I'm I'm researching stuff. I'm I'm listening to Marriage on the Rocks maybe, <laughs> telling me how to get my shit together and right. and it's some sometimes the problem is you. I know, and that's a pill that nobody wants to swallow, mm-hmm. and it's got to be very painful and hopefully he doesn't realize this and hopefully he found someone that he was sexually compatible with but that that chemistry together is what's going to set that off Mm -hmm. um you know and i think that the other thing that she talks about is in the very beginning is inexperience oh i know um just the under exposure of sex being young yeah she said right that they got together when they're young and and when you are young, and I mean, not that you have to have sex with a ton of different people or anything like that, but we, I don't know, we were not virgins before mm-hmm. we got together, and so we, you know, you have Wait. to... what? <laughs> Turn the recording off. <laughs> we had, you know, experience with it, and, and there's other people like her that didn't have even anything else to compare to. Mm-hmm. Well, or she didn't say else. she was a virgin. She right. was just no, 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 inexperienced. I know. Yeah. yeah. Uh-huh. You know, she could have one or two partners. Right. And um, 
and I think that that's inexperience is a relative term too. Mm-hmm. It is um, right. And I think I mean e- even if you, I remember getting in, in, in like a debate with somebody before about like somebody was this guy I was in the navy and I used to debate with this guy about relationships a lot um, just because he was the the puppy dog and ice cream kind of guy that really took the the super sweet approach and he was very adamant about he didn't want a woman that had slept with a lot of men. Mm. And I said, well, let, let me ask you a question. I said, let's say you have a girl that has had, we'll even say 25 different one night stands. She's had sex with 25 different partners, one time each. Is that worse or better than a girl that's been pounded by the same dude for the last five years, five times a week. Mm-hmm. Is it really the amount of different sex is the problem, or is it the amount of sex? And well, that's the amount of partners. I think he was getting. At. Yeah, mm-hmm. but that was where I was like, well, what's what are you looking for? Mm-hmm. Is it really this this territorial exploratory? I'm staking my flag in this new land, and I have to shout that at the top. Or if you want to get, you know, crude about it, who's going to be tighter and who's going to be looser? Yeah. Yeah. I I mean, most women, or I don't even want to say women, most couples that have been together are going to try different things and cross more boundaries and comfort zone than a one night stand would. Mm -hmm. And so, but I think that that's where I say it's kind of, it's a relative term because it, I don't, I don't know why I wanted to head down that path, but um, <laughs> but I think that if, depending on what you've been exposed to and what you've had, will if you've had minimal experience in something, that's you're you're, you're not going to have enough oversight to really say what's good and what's bad. Mm-hmm. And if you if you take something as simple as as should I talk about pizza or Mexican food? Me- Mexican. Food. Okay. Let's say that you have never had Mexican food before. It's Hispanic Heritage Month. I don't want to tie that into the fucking episode. <laughs> That's rude. <laughs> um, so, let's say you've never had Mexican food before. Mm-hmm. And you, you meet somebody and you're like, hey, I'm going to take you to this Mexican restaurant that I absolutely love. They have free chips and salsa. And I love free chips and salsa. So mm-hmm. we're going to go to this Mexican food place. And you take them to this, or this person goes to this Mexican place, food place that's shit. It's not that great. It's not that, it's not awful, but it's, it's just mediocre. Mm-hmm. And you're like, I've never had Mexican food before. Mm-hmm. Okay, I'll try Mexican food. And you get it and you're like, meh, it's not the worst. I, I, I would go back again, mm-hmm. but it's, it's not that great. Um, I'm not excited about going back there. If you want to go back there because you love the free chips and salsa, you know, if we want to make it a date night there one Friday every month, that's fine. Let's go back to that Mexican restaurant. Mm-hmm. And the person that wants to go there is always bringing it up. Let's go, oh, what do you want to Let's go get Mexican food. And then you're like, oh, Mexican We got to go again? back to that Mexican place. Yeah. And he's like, it's free chips and salsa. <laughs> do you not understand? It's free. Ch- you can have all the chips and salsa you want. It's right there. Uh-huh. And she's like, you know, it's it's not about the free chips and salsa to me. The food quality just isn't that good. Right. I just, I, once again, I don't mind going there every once in a while, but I don't leave there feeling full or satisfied or, or anything. It's just blah. Mm-hmm. And then one day at lunch at her work, a coworker is like, hey, there's this really good little Mexican restaurant that nobody knows about over here. Um, do you want to go grab a bite to eat? And she's like, yeah. Yeah, I don't really like Mexican food. My husband's always trying to get me to eat Mexican food, and it's not that great. And he's like, well, they have the best carne asada burrito you've ever had. Why is it he? Because it makes it sexier this way. Okay. (laughs) No, no, that's fine. And so she says, okay. All right. I've never had a carne asada burrito, Uh um, but I've had Mexican food. Not a fan. Okay, I'll give it a shot with you. And it's the best Mexican food ever. Oh. And oh, by the way, you actually have to pay for the chips and salsa. But the chips and salsa are ten times better mm. than the free chips and salsa the other place is given. Oh, man. So just because you've been exposed to one type of Mexican food doesn't give you enough 
validity to outrule Mexican food. Mm-hmm. You just have been sitting at the wrong booth with the wrong person at the wrong damn restaurant. Yeah. Go out and get you a nice, thick, carne asada burrito. Oh, yeah. Put that in your mouth and see how that marinates. <laughs> yes. Yes. See, that's why I had to make it him. Yeah. Okay. I was headed there. Okay. <laughs> I got you. But too many, too many people have a negative experience. Or not even a negative experience. They just don't have... They don't have experience. that wow factor. They don't get. Right. They don't orgasm. They don't have the oh. They don't. It's there's no fireworks. There's nothing there that is says, I have to have this. Mm-hmm. I want to do this again. And I can't wait till the next time we do that. Yeah. Um, but there are people that they have that not so, you know, mediocre experience with sex, and they just immediately assume like, well, maybe it's just sex isn't for me. I guess I'm yeah. just not that into it and it's like you just haven't had the right good sex i know well and i i I know the some we talked we referenced like um, (laughs) that 70s show every once in a while but even when eric and donna have sex for the first time and she's just like she's talking to jackie about it she's like meh you know and and jackie's like what he wasn't good (laughs) and but if you have those, if you keep having those experiences, if you, if you're just like, eh, whatever, mm-hmm. I don't like, uh, it's okay, I guess. I yeah. guess like, it, this is how it's supposed to be, mm-hmm. right? I mean, we're well, supposed to have sex. Well, like, so. even her, she's like, I just got used to it. Yeah, I just got used to it being bad. Uh huh. Or not bad, but just I just got used to this. She she didn't know if it was. And she didn't even say it was bad. Uh huh. She didn't say she's. Like she said, I was I was indifferent about Uh it. It was just kind of, and that's I I couldn't imagine in our relationship one of us being like, "Mm, I'm just indifferent about sex. Yeah, whatever. I could do it if you want. I I I could not. You know, it's it's like, are you hungry? Well, I could eat. Yeah. You know. I know. It's like, no, I'm I'm ready to eat now. Yeah. (laughs) You know. Right now. (laughs) (laughs) And so I think that 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 desire and drive that your partner has for sex is a direct reflection of the, the quality of sex at hand and how it makes them feel during, after, you know, and, and that's where, you know, I know a lot of guys that are like, I go through all of these steps to, ins- to try to lay out the perfect path, the perfect path for sex with my wife. I, I make sure that I do the dishes. I make sure that I put the kids down. I try to make everything as stress-free as possible. It's like defusing a fucking bomb in order to try to have sex with this woman. And one wrong misstep, it's going to blow up and it ain't going to happen. Mm-hmm. And that's where I feel and we feel that your, your sexual chemistry with your partner and the desire that you have for one another, the thought of of their body of their their being of their touch of their look of their noises of their smell of everything about them that makes them a sexual person that should be enough to at least incite some kind of flushed feeling or what's what's Dwight say some blood rush to the tip of my penis yeah yeah <laughs> you know yes or something like that and that's where uh, you you realize after talking to other couples or hearing people reach out about the problems you're having that that's completely absent mm-hmm. it doesn't exist and unfortunately i really don't know what to tell a couple to yeah. get this I know. and i think that sometimes and i'm, I'm going to take this step further i think that some people say the spark is gone mm-hmm I don't think the spark was ever there. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like, I think it was, it was something like this. At all. Yeah. yeah, I know. Uh, well, I, and I think that what she said about, um, about it not, what did she, let me see. It was about not being, um, him, that she just wasn't, she just wasn't interested, period, like, in him. Oh, like, after he sent the pic, and she was like, I realized he didn't turn me on at all. Yeah. And no, it ma- yeah, because she said no matter 
Yeah, no matter the effort he put in. Yeah, Because exactly. he, he was doing all the quote-unquote right things that a guy that realizes his wife isn't into sex tries to do. Mm-hmm. Well, I'm going to get her into sex. Exactly. And she doesn't even realize that it's him. She mm-hmm. didn't realize that it was him until she had the right dick. Yeah, I know. Yeah, exactly. I mean, and that's... That's exactly what it was. Well, and, and like, because I think that that really, it really hit home with me because I felt like with my ex, I felt that way. Like, there's nothing that he could do to make, to make me want him anymore. Mm-hmm. And no matter how hard he tries or whatever, like, it was just, the, the sex was just blah. It wasn't, it was like, meh. Whatever, right. like, I'll just, I guess let's just get it over with type thing. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and, and then, like, whenever I met you and we had sex for the first time and it was like, well, no, we didn't even have to have sex, honestly, before, before we even had sex, it was like, whoa, mm-hmm. that was the like she said the chemistry mm-hmm. was was amazing it was crazy and um and then to for us to when we actually did have sex it was mind blowing and the the experience was was nothing like i'd ever experienced before and i think that with her saying we didn't have sex we fucked mm-hmm. that was like, wow, yes, that's exactly it. But but going back to the people, like, because people don't want to say. You're kind of yelling at me. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. You're getting all amped up. But but, but going <laughs> with, with the way what people talk or you know saying they don't want to say that word. Mm-hmm. They don't want to. They don't want to say fucked. They and, and so I think that what we really wanted to try to talk about was. The, you can, you can fuck and it's okay. Yeah. And that's probably preferred and, and better for your sexual relationship yeah, in than, your marriage than, than love making. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but, but I think that that's where you have to take the, the letter as a whole, where if she had said, we didn't make love, we fucked and I never saw him again. Mm-hmm. But then to immediately to say, we've been married for five years. Yeah, I know. That that's, you know, that's the the power and the magnitude that that, that sexual compatibility and chemistry can have. Mm-hmm. Is it's worth marrying you for this. <laughs> <laughs> Not only that, but... But I think that that's where, that's where the story has a happy ending. Mm-hmm. It wasn't just the point of let's let's share a or let, let me let me just tell this gratuitous story of my old, my ex husband never gave it to me and I met this guy and he did. Mm-hmm. It was that and you know I'm sure if she would expand on everything in between after that first session, but you know in her mind it's we had this chemistry, we had sex and the rest is history. Mm-hmm. We, we were we bonded that powerfully over the sex mm-hmm. that and does the the twice thing resonate with you as well? Oh gosh, yeah, it does. It does. I was like, oh my gosh, like it, the, and it's funny because because we say it all the, all the time with people and how people tell us like, oh my gosh, I swear you were talking about me and mm-hmm. like her. Letter, oh, then they get it from somebody yeah, else. Like, like I swear you're talking about me. Oh my gosh, that's so <clears> crazy. <throat> <laughs> but but I think that that's where it, it, the the point of the story was. This is not. I, I was unhappy. I I wasn't sexually dissatisfied and didn't even know it. And 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 it's the same thing we've talked about happiness. I didn't realize how miserable I was in my last marriage until I was happy now. Mm-hmm. And I think if you had asked someone like this in the last in her last marriage, how's your sex life? She probably would have said, "Oh, it's good." Mm-hmm. But. It was uncomparable to good sex. Yeah. And then once she had it, it's like, geez. I mean, it goes back to the Mexican food thing. 
you, know, you get that you get that big meaty carne asada burrito, <laughs> and it's gonna it's gonna trump that, you know, the wimpy ass little chalupa that you got at the other place, <laughs> with the soggy bread and you know, wilted lettuce. Nobody wants that. Mm, yeah, it wouldn't be bread. Yeah. Well, I mean, yeah. the, the chalupas may sometimes yeah, they have like it on a, the fry bread thing. Yeah. Thing. Uh-huh. Um, but anyway, so I, I but I think that you you just you don't realize how how bad something is until you have something really good. Yeah. Um, and then that that's a that's a good form of hindsight. Yeah, it is. It really is. I know. Yeah. Um, I don't know. I mean. It, it's funny, like just uh, just reading this, and and even like with the not have being sure if she's having an orgasm, mm. and how how are you not sure if you're having one or not? Well, and I think that that's where if you've never had one, you just don't know. You, you just don't. You're know. You're just like, oh well, maybe that felt. That felt better than normal, but and I, and was I, that an orgasm? I, I, I sometimes, want, and since I'm not obviously a woman, I don't know what they go through. Mm-hmm. I'm assuming, as an ignorant, non-vagina-having man, <laughs> <laughs> that women that are like, I think I did. I bet they kind of get close to it, mm-hmm. but it never goes to completion. And they're like, well, that started to feel really good. And it felt better than it had before. And I don't hit that point every time, but I mean, from someone that can orgasm every time, can you even fathom someone not knowing? Well, yeah, I can because I, I mean, I didn't have orgasms like him. Right. I do. Well, so I mean, so that that's the answer. So it is. It is the answer. And but now it's like I can't fathom it because it's like I. Well, that's that good hindsight. Yeah, it is. Yeah. Uh-huh. I know. Um, and so, even with the... But I was saying about the 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 sexting and stuff. Because she wouldn't... She didn't want to... Yeah, 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 with yeah, her, yeah. With her husband. Mm-hmm. Or her ex-husband. Yeah. And she she said, you know, that it grossed her out. And the like, why would... Why, basically, why would he want to send me these pictures? Ugh. Yeah. Ugh. Right. <laughs> but, and then, to have it completely flipped from ew to ooh, yeah, mm-hmm. I want that. So you send me, send me that. Right. Or, and that, that feeling like, oh gosh, like, and obviously, since they have been together now for this long, and ha- they're happily married. They, that didn't go away. It wasn't just the initial, yeah, initial type of chemistry mm-hmm. that you, the butterfly yeah. feelings, and that that go away eventually. Mm-hmm. It's it's stuck with them, <laughs> right? Yeah. Well, and I think that that's where, and and it's neat how she how she talks about that. I knew I didn't like it from my ex, and. Now I'm talking to this new guy, and it's like, it's like, ooh, uh, I don't know if I, I, I don't hate the idea of it. Mm-hmm. Why? Why is that? Because she, she couldn't, and she even says I couldn't even, I couldn't explain the feelings I was having. Yeah. And I think that that's where you, you get so used to being in that non-satisfied category that the desire and satisfaction that you're going to have from the right partner that's producing that those new chemicals with that new chemistry you're having you're you don't really know how to explain it you just know something feels good mm-hmm. and you know it's the 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 feeling of new love is very powerful and that's most people look at it as lightning in a bottle they look at it as it's a very t- and even your most qualified Sex therapists, marriage counselors, relationship experts will tell you that goes away. And they're fucking wrong. Mm-hmm. Um, if you're with the right, right person, they're wrong. Mm-hmm. It, they are correct. They are right for about 99.9% of the population. Mm-hmm. It does go away for most people. Yeah. But for those of us that it doesn't go away with, we know that that's not an accurate statement. Mm-hmm. 
it's not. Or it doesn't have to be. An and it's statement. it's not that constant distraction, you know. Oh, oh, I can't stop thinking about him. Oh, I can't work. It's not that. It's not that. But it is that. It is that that flushed rush of feeling and emotion and excitement. Excuse me. And desire and all of those other things that come with those that butterfly effect. Mm-hmm. I know that means something else, but since you call it butterflies. And and that that's what what doesn't go away if you stay sexually connected. Mm-hmm. And I think that you, you hear you, even with her talking about, you know, well my ex tried to do this, this, this and this. Mm-hmm. And she just dismisses it. Oh yeah, well, great gesture. And, and we've heard from women that are that have said that my husband's doing all the quote unquote right things. Yeah. I still am just not sexually attracted to him. I mean, we we talked about that recently mm-hmm. on the <clears throat> why why your wife doesn't want to have sex with you and stuff yeah. like that. How we're seeing more and more women that are like, he's not doing it for me. He's just not doing it for me. Um, and in most of those cases. On the conversations that we've been allowed to have with these people, you find out that they knew that getting into the relationship. Yes. It wasn't this big surprise. It was never this. And to the guy, the guy's probably like, well, she was all over me when we first got together. The spark fizzled out. And, but she knows there never was a spark. Yeah. I, wasn't, I was never into you the way that, you know, so-and-so over here is into her guy. Mm-hmm. You know, or the girl in the letter. She wasn't into her husband the way, or her first husband the way she is into her second, second husband. Mm-hmm. And people, I know we tend to put, to quote the 40 year old virgin, we tend to put the pussy on a pedestal. <laughs> yeah, right? To where we, we put, you know, and I say that tongue in cheek, but it's, we put sex as a high priority. Mm-hmm. And, other couples that do that, they know exactly where we're coming from, and they get it, and they talk to us about it, and they say, you're right, mm-hmm. you're dead on. Others that don't, push back yeah. and say, well, it's not all about sex. And that's when they start throwing out the hypotheticals. Well, what are you going to do when, if, when yeah. Blah, yeah, what if, whatever. You're not going through your what if right now, so my question is, what if you actually were having sex with one another? How happy would you be? Yeah. <laughs> you know? know. Um, but that's where... You, you don't know what you're missing out on if you haven't experienced it. Yeah. Um, and and that, that's where this, this, this lady that wrote in, that's exactly where she came from. Mm-hmm. It was this, was, this was how it was, this is how it is, and oh well, yeah. I, guess that, I guess this is sex. Yeah, yeah. And then she's like, no, this is sex. Well, not only is this, is it sex though (laughs) it's fucking right it's not just sex Mm -hmm. and it's uh, and the difference i guess we yeah the difference between just sex and fucking is the passion Mm -hmm. the the passion and the chemistry there's something raw about it that is uninhibited and unapologetic not aggressive Mm-mm. not degrading and I think that that's what people think and I know mm-hmm. even saying that that there are women that are like if my husband ever said I'm gonna fuck you tonight I would say get the fuck out of here mm-hmm. don't ever talk to me like that again well you're missing out <laughs> yeah big time yeah I know and I think that that's right I think that that is true that a lot of people think that it's aggressive mm-hmm. the the word itself I think but I think the only thing is aggressive from one way to another there's not a guy out there that would ever be like you know I, I gotta say I was really disappointed in my wife last night she she stepped out of the shower naked and said I'm gonna fuck you <laughs> I was like Ugh, don't ever talk to me like that right it's not about sex uh-huh. I have a headache <laughs> guys would never say guys wouldn't complain about that right um, but women would uh huh and I think that that's where you, know, you need to loosen up, Karen. <laughs> Karen! <laughs> you know? Yeah. Quit being so uptight. I know. Yeah, I think that's, I think that's true. To, because if you're, if you're so uptight and you, you don't have an open mind about 
your partner's wants and needs, then you're not going to have fun having sex. But, well, I mean, there, there, are the, there are the women that are... I say women. I don't, mean, I don't even mean to pick on the women because guys kind of do it too. Um, but yeah, I'll pick on the women. <laughs> there are those women that are that they fantasize, they even verbalize that if you know this this hot hunky actor right here, oh, if I just wish somebody like that would throw me on the bed and have their way with me. Mm-hmm. But if your husband even hints that that's what he wants to do, it's degrading. It's upsetting. You're the mother of his children. It's That's you know, true. and it's like, well, you're not allowed to. I don't want to say you're not. You're allowed to do whatever the fuck you want. You're a hypocrite when you say, "Oh, I wish, I wish somebody like Jason Momoa would just bend me over and have their way with me." Uh-huh. And then your husband's like, "Let's do doggy style," and you're like, well, "You think I'm like a dog? <laughs> don't ever do that. <laughs> right? That's so degrading." I know. And it's yeah. like, well, if that's your reaction, the problem isn't sex. The problem isn't doggy style. The problem isn't your, isn't your ass up in the air ready to take a dick. It's your husband. You don't want that type of treatment from the person that you're with. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And people try to almost associate it with, well, no, I don't want that because we have a loving, respectful oh, relationship. Oh, gosh. Get the fuck out of here with that. Yeah. I hate and that. And it's, it's such a cop-out response. Yeah. No. It's like, No. <laughs> No, no, no. <laughs> I'm not talking about spitting in each other's mouths and... No. You know, clothes pins on nipples and slapping each... Well, I don't know. If you're into that, have at it. But that's not what we mean no. when we uh-huh. say that stuff. It's not It's not to hurt anyone in any way, shape, or form. Well, yeah, and it doesn't have to be crazy, wild, different... Yeah, we're not talking like bondage and BDSM sex. and... Yeah. It, to be to be fucking yeah you can fuck and still and it be I don't know I, I'm I'm trying to, to well think. the the difference is making love is you know you throw on the the shot a mix <laughs> and th- you can still have the same type of ambiance right. for either mm-hmm. but you throw on that slow mix you 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 know. You try to be real light and to do the little tickly finger things that most women don't like. Yeah. And you try to take everything slow and soft. And I think as you start to explain it, people think, well, that sounds, that's hot. That, that sounds, sounds sexy. sexy. And then it's whispers and it's, it's I want someone to, to look at me deep in my eyes and, and tell me how much they love me while, while we're making love. And afterwards I might cry because it was so beautiful. That's fucking stupid. Oh my god! And that is not anywhere in the ballpark of a fucking, fucking. Yeah. <laughs> right. <laughs> I know. Yeah. And and I'm not saying that fucking has to be the death metal record and strobe lights blasting off in the no, bedroom. No, no, it doesn't. But it's 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 different. vocal. It's loud. It's sweaty. It's mm-hmm. you know not missionary. You know. Yeah. It's not. And if, if it is guy on top, it's some variation of a leg over the shoulder or up in the air or, right. you know, a foot on the headboard or something. Uh-huh. I mean, it's, it, it, it's, it's not playing the short game. It's, it, you know, you're going for overtime and you're bringing it. Yeah. And I think that for guys, there has to be a level of confidence that isn't solely on the guy. It's not just that you need to find a guy that's super confident. Some of that is... Is what the woman brings, brings out, out in the guy, uh-huh. and that's yeah. what you and I've talked about. The way that you and I have sex is different than how we ever had sex with other people mm-hmm. because of you know we talk about being a supportive, loving, caring partner. Same thing goes in the sack, yeah. you know. Uh-huh. And I think that that's that's where you should feel comfortable enough. We've talked about that as well to say those. Those initial dirty thoughts that pop into your head when you're having sex, blurt it out. Mm -hmm. You shouldn't have to have a filter unless you're about to call your wife by somebody else's name. Oh, God. Or something stupid like that. Oh, my God. But you 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 shouldn't have a filter. If something feels good, get graphic about it. Uh And you should be comfortable expressing that while you're having sex with your partner. Yeah. 
And that's something that when people say, quote unquote, make love, they aren't doing it. Oh, no, no way. Well, e- even with this lady saying that about how she, how she said, prove it. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and that feeling of, what did I do? Yeah. yeah. And, and you have to have that trust. And, and fucking is instinctual. Yeah. Instinct is that a word? Instinctive. In, yeah, yeah. You go on your instincts yeah. with, without second guessing. Uh huh. And that that's what she did when she texted mm-hmm. him back right away and said, "Prove it." It was it was just her initial like, "Bam! This is what I'm gonna send." Mm-hmm. And then she afterwards she's like, "Oh God! Yeah. Why did I say that?" But then like, when you're in the moment, when you're having sex or you're fucking, and you say those things, it's it is just. It, well, it should come off natural. Mm-hmm. And it should be just a bam, a quick little instinct <laughs> right. for, for you to, to say without getting embarrassed. Around right, your yeah. And, and, and that's where yeah, you should feel uninhibited to be able to say those things. But your partner, you should also not be the, what did you say? Well, and, that, <laughs> and like with him responding to her like the way he did yeah. a little bit later, but... The way he responded later to her, and mm-hmm. she's like, "Oh, good. Okay, now I don't have to feel dumb about it." Yeah, right. Yep. And that's how it is with sex mm-hmm. too. You don't, yes, respond to each other, good and naturally, and don't make you make each other feel stupid. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, I, I think that you know, and I said it before. We 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 tend to. You know, I, I know the argument is you, you guys tend to put too much emphasis on how important sex is. But I, I, I do that because I know that the majority don't put nearly enough mm-hmm. emphasis on on how big of a role that that plays in happiness in your relationship. How little things don't happen or ever become an issue because the sex is so good. And that's what... Once again, if you aren't in that realm, you, you can't relate to that. You don't understand. You can't even fathom the concept that you're telling me that just because you fuck so good that you don't argue. <laughs> yup. <laughs> yeah. Uh-huh. And, and that just seems so foreign to people, except for that small percentage that is like, yeah, they're you're so exactly right. right. You guys are dead yeah. on. <laughs> and if you haven't figured out by now, our podcast is not for the majority because no. the majority of y'all have shit marriages anyway. <laughs> yeah, this is true. There's yeah. 500 other podcasts that's going to tell you how great your shitty marriage is and how, you should. how how great it is that you aren't interested in your husband sexually and how he goes to the strip club and, and you know borderline cheats on his partner that that's just normally like the fucking dumbass post of the week. Yeah. That's the majority of marriages out there, oh and that's the majority train of thought. So there's 500 other podcast plus out there that have that same shit message mm-hmm. but i bet we're the only one talking about raw fucking <laughs> right yeah <laughs> fucking not making love yeah Man. i don't know i mean i'm glad that i'm really really glad that she wrote wrote us and and what and what she says in the at the her very ending of it to to share it mm-hmm. with everybody, you know, to, what did she say? Mm-hmm. I hope this story helps some, relates to some, and awakens some. Yeah. Yes. I, I think that is perfectly put, mm-hmm. because I think that a lot of people need to hear other stories like this, other than us, I guess. And, and I'm not, I'm not advocating that you go out and find somebody else to do this. I think even when she says awaken some, it doesn't mean wake up and get the fuck out of your boring sex no. marriage. It, try to ignite that fire. If you've never had the spark, try to ignite that fire. Figure out why you haven't had that spark. Yeah, but I, if it's one of those things where it's your partner, and you may not know that that's the reason. Like, she didn't know that that was the reason she wasn't enjoying sex. She thought it was her. Yeah. She thought it was her, you know, fault uh-huh. that she wasn't enjoying sex. Yeah. Well, and I know, I know that, like, even for me, I think that 
when when I wasn't when I was with my ex and I wasn't enjoying having sex, I really started blaming it on uh, well, one I started blaming it on him and the, the addiction, but I also blamed it on my hormones and being um, uh, on birth control. Mm-hmm. So I stopped. I stopped using birth control because I was like, it's ruining my my sex drive. Mm-hmm. I don't think that I think that I need to stop doing this because I'm not wanting to have sex. And it wasn't that either. Yeah. It wasn't. It was not being with the right partner and not being sexually compatible mm-hmm. with him. And I mean, I don't know. Like you said, though, other people can try to ignite that, though, and try to figure it out and try to to understand what is going on in your own brain and mm-hmm. and see, is it me or is it my partner? Yeah. And go from there. I mean, try, try different things. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because I, I, I don't... A good person doesn't immediately start trying to blame their partner. Mm. They try They try to look at like, well, what am I doing wrong? And that's where sometimes you end up carrying a blame or a burden that isn't necessarily your fault. Mm-hmm. It's not your partner's fault either. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's, it's, not, it's not his fault that he wasn't sexually compatible with her. Mm-hmm. He can't do anything to change that. I mean, it's... It, unfortunately, that's just, you know, how chemistry works. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Aluminum can't be still no matter how hard it tries. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. You know, mm-hmm. and, and so I think that that's that's where the, the the sexual chemistry comes into play. You you can't you can't make something appear that isn't there. Mm-hmm. I mean, it just doesn't work that way. And then that's where I know that sounds very bleak for people, but you know, and, and I think one of the before we I know we're getting close to an hour, but. One of the things that I think that gets misplaced is, and she even hits on it, that he, she didn't understand how he could still want to keep having sex because he didn't enjoy it. Mm-hmm. And sex, to men, is like pizza. Mm-hmm. Even no matter how bad it is, it's still pizza, and pizza's still pretty good. Mm-hmm. I've never had a piece of pizza that I've been like, that's the worst pizza I've ever had, I'm never going to eat that again. Even if I said that wasn't very good, I'd still eat that pizza again. Mm -hmm. If I'm at a party or somebody brings it over, I wouldn't turn pizza away. Yeah. And so that's how men are with sex and with their wives. Mm -hmm. Doesn't mean that it's great for them. You know? But at least they're having pizza. Yeah, but at least they're having some pizza. Uh Uh-huh. You know? Yeah. And and so I think that that's where women will be like, well, sometimes a woman could be like, well, it's, you know... Either they do one of two things. They say, he's just too horny. Or they say, well, it, it wasn't me because they still wanted to have sex with me all the time. And it's like, no, you're, you're pizza. Mm-hmm. He's, yeah. he's, you know, That's nobody's going to turn away pizza. Everybody wants pizza. Mm-hmm. You get a craving for pizza, and you want to go to Andalini's and get the best place, and Andalini's is closed, and so you got to go get Pizza Hut instead. You're like... All right, you know, Pizza Hut ain't that bad. I'll get Pizza Hut still. Yeah, last time we had Pizza Hut, it was bad. <laughs> yeah, they screwed us over on yeah. that. Mm-hmm. But I'd still eat it again. <laughs> <laughs> but I think that that's where, because men and women are different with that, mm-hmm. you know, just like the Mexican food analogy or, or the woman's perspective typically of the pizza is if I have a shitty piece of pizza from this place, I'm not going back there again. Mm-hmm. And guys don't care. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. And then that's where it does get forced and it feels like work for her and, and all that stuff. And he's like, he doesn't understand that, you know, mm-hmm. he ain't stepping the crust. <laughs> he ain't stepping the crust. <laughs> nice. I don't know. Yeah, I, I think that it was, it's been a, a good topic to discuss. Now I'm in the mood for pizza. Yeah. For you. <laughs> <laughs> Um, yeah, it was a good topic to, to discuss though. And, and like I said before, I'm so glad that she, she wrote us and, and told us this whole freaking story. It's, it's always fun. I, 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 I kind of get a kick out of when, 
we've discussed something around the realm before. Like, how do we talk about this? Mm-hmm. What what do we bring up? How how can, is it too vulgar? Is it too you know? Is anybody going to resonate with it? Is it going to relate, or is it just going to come off brash? Mm-hmm. And then we're like, okay, we're no. When we we say no, we're not going to talk about this. We're not going to talk about this. And then we actually have another item that we're going to talk about. And then we get something like this, and it's like, oh. We have to talk there about it. There it is. We have uh-huh. to talk about it. Yeah. Um, and so it's, yeah. yeah. It's nice to get that. It is. Uh-huh. Yeah. Well, and I think that it was funny because it was a different type of person reaching out. Because mm-hmm. most of the time, it's somebody that is having problems. It's going through something right and now. And so yeah. this was actually kind of nice to have something that... Actually, we got a couple of different yeah, ones. Yeah, I was going to say, I, I don't know if I want to share that one I know. Yet. Uh-huh. But because, that one was really good too. Yeah, we, we got it. I've talked about it before. We shared another letter. Uh-huh. Um, but it, it's, you know, like in, in quick summary, it's another, you know, I didn't totally agree with where you guys were coming from until I went through it and now I get it. Yeah. Yes. Yes. So, yeah, we've gotten a couple this week uh-huh. that were really, really good. And so it's, it's just nice to have a little bit of a change uh-huh. in. At least some people having success with with their yeah. relationships. Yep. So For yeah, sure. we're we're really happy about that. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, but I don't, I don't have anything else else to add really. I think that sex is always fun to talk about, and we hope that you guys all enjoy listening to us talk about it. <laughs> yeah, and I I wonder if I because I. I, I've had, we've had people be like, you know, I, to, I told my wife or my husband to listen to your episode. And I don't know how they take that. Mm-hmm. Because I think that some kind, so I think men are, well, I get both of them do it, but I, th- I think men are really bad about, like, well, maybe she won't listen to me, maybe she'll listen to you. Mm-hmm. And maybe that is the case. Mm-hmm. Because there are people like that. that yeah. They don't listen to the person closest to them, but they'll listen to a, an objective third party. Yeah, um, complete outsider. But when that objective third party is telling them what, your the other partner, partner is, then it to... seems very biased. Yeah. Um, so I, I, with something like this, I'm not really sure what I would recommend someone do with that. I mean, yeah. unless you're trying to get perspective on it, and you're like, is is this us? Is that what happened to us? Or, or maybe you're like, holy shit, that story that that lady shared was very close to ours. You've got to listen to this. Yeah. You know. Um, hopefully, it's like that. <laughs> yeah. It it would be really nice to get more people that are like. You know, I just think the percentage of people that have gone through what we went through and what she went through mm-hmm. is just so small. Well, yeah, not only that, but it's so small, and then it's even smaller for the people that actually we'll seek reach it out. out. Yeah, uh-huh. seek it out and reach out uh-huh. both. I mean, it gets smaller and smaller because so many people don't relate, and if you see marriage on the rocks. You think we we this did this is about a marriage on the rocks. Yeah, we yeah. did that on purpose. So, you know, people that were had a marriage that was on the rocks would would listen to us, but it was mainly just because of the drinks. We like to have drinks. Yeah, so. we knew that that was what we were gonna do. Yeah, but yeah, cool. Um, yeah, I don't have anything else to do. No. Uh-uh. All right. Nope. Well, thank you, everyone, as always, for listening. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel, like us on Facebook, follow us on Instagram, join our Marriage on the Rock Speakeasy page. We're probably going to have another giveaway here in October Mm -hmm. next month. So, yeah, be on the lookout for that. Invite your friends to the Speakeasy page, too. We've uh, we've had actually a few um, new people because of some people Mm -hmm. sharing it so we're we're still gonna probably have the rate and reviewing thing as criteria for drawings but don't wait till october you can always just screenshot it next month and share it yeah do it now it's not like it won't be entered Mm -hmm. so yeah cool so yeah thank you for listening and um, listen to us wherever you listen to your podcast and we'll talk to you next week thanks